Thank you for watching this Scholarship Foundation educational video. Our topic is what happens after you apply for financial aid. Now the first step in applying for a federal financial aid is completing the FAFSA form or the free application for federal student aid. After you've completed the FAFSA online, the Federal Student Aid Processor will email back to you a document called the Student Aid Report, or SAR, or SAR for short. Basically, the SAR mimics back to you what you entered into your online FAFSA form, and it will also show you the EFC, or Expected Family Contribution Number, that was calculated for you. Now review the SAR carefully to ensure that it is 100% correct. We've seen students and families accidentally make careless mistakes on the FAFSA form and then not review the SAR form so they never get it corrected. In several instances, this means that the students were not offered the financial aid they should have been eligible for. So make any corrections and email back the corrected SAR to the federal processor. Keep in mind that the federal financial aid processor and all of the colleges you apply to will be emailing information to you. Thus, it's critical that you look at your email several times a week at a minimum. Now, you and the colleges you listed on the FAFSA will receive the student aid report or SAR data from the federal processor. Colleges then match admission records with financial aid applications and determine aid eligibility. Colleges prepare notices of financial aid eligibility to email or send to admitted students who have completed all required financial aid forms. If you weren't accepted at a college, you won't receive a financial aid notification letter from that college. Once you receive financial aid notifications from all of your admitted schools, it's time to sit down and compare them. Do this carefully, as it's easy to be confused. Currently, there is no standard format for financial aid award letters. And although many colleges are trying to be clear in their format, some colleges are not trying at all. Typically, a notification letter should list the full cost of attendance, or COA, for a school year, including tuition and fees, room and board, books, personal supplies, etc. Next, the letter will usually list aid from a variety of sources, such as federal grants and loans, state aid, school or institution-based scholarships and grants, and it should also list your expected family contribution, or EFC. But some letters only list tuition and fees, not the total cost of attendance, and some don't show the cost of attendance at all, so you need to be on guard. To help, this year the colleges participating in federal student aid programs have now been required to have a net price calculator on their websites. This tool estimates the total cost of attendance and subtracts any aid. You'll need to enter some data on your family income and size of family and number of children in college, but it will help you get an estimate. Now financial aid is usually a combination of several items. Just from the federal system, you might be eligible for Pell Grants, Work Study, Federal Student Loans, and Parent PLUS Loans. But overall, don't focus on the amount of aid. Focus on the bottom line cost to your family. Sometimes a more expensive school can be affordable, depending on the aid package. And sometimes it's the public state school that offers the best deal. So once you've compared award letters, take a good hard look at your family finances and spell out what you'll need to contribute each semester. Now this is also the time to consider if you will need to borrow money through student loans or parent loans or both. And think about what is a prudent and reasonable amount to borrow for you or your family. First, consider federal student loans. Private bank loans should be your last option due to higher interest rates and less flexible repayment options. For these reasons, we really don't recommend that you take out private loans. Also, be aware that many colleges offer tuition payment plans that allow you to make monthly payments, which can be more workable for some families. You can inquire at the College Financial Aid Office to see if this option is available. Next, that time you spent earlier in your senior year applying for scholarships can come in handy now. On top of looking at the financial aid notification letter and what your family can pay, be aware of any outside agency scholarship awards you can add to the total. Awards like this come from places like the Scholarship Foundation of Santa Barbara. For example, this year the Scholarship Foundation will help more than 2,500 Santa Barbara County students with scholarship awards totaling $8 million. Comparing award letters, doing the family math, and looking at loan and payment plan options are all necessary to make the best decisions when it comes to financing a college education. Be sure to consider the post-graduation implications of all of your decisions. There are several loan calculators at financial aid websites that will help you estimate your repayments when you finish your degree. 
We recommend you look at the financial aid website at www.finaid.org, F-I-N-A-I-D.org, to calculate your expected loan payments. This is a really important part of understanding financial aid. So thank you for listening, and if you have financial aid questions or need assistance, please contact the Scholarship Foundation office at the information listed here. And at the Scholarship Foundation, we're creating opportunity and transforming lives, one scholarship at a time. Thank you.